Carlos, they're so loud. Welcome to Villano Beach. Oh, it's fully alive. Well, as you can see, this thing is completely detached. How to fix a junction in box that's come off your solar. Going on an exploratory mission. Checking out this little beach, having some lunch, a little picnic, and it should be nice. Get off the boat for a little bit. Doug's doing all the work. Yeah, mule! Ah, it's quite shallow, so I'm walking it over now. Go, go, go! I'll push you in the water. Horseshoe crab. Look at him. He made a huge scuttle trail. He's been trying to get him back to the water, so I think we're going to give him a hand. Here you go, bud. Here you go. Ah, be free. You're not moving. like some sort of bird sanctuary. Help save the coastal birds. It's missing apples, but it's still good. Tuna sandwich on homemade bread. Yum yum. Well, I didn't think we'd be spending that much time in St. Augustine, but it's a super nice little spot. The anchorage is pretty awesome. I mean, you do get wake, so there's quite a bit of boats that go by, but it's been really nice here. We've been doing so much editing. We've been really catching up because with all the rain we had in New Smyrna Beach, we barely did any editing and fell way behind. So right now we're just enjoying a beautiful sunset. things happening there. I don't know. Might be a storm or something. There's definitely some weird clouds going on. Sure. Something's coming. It's time to do some groceries and it's Saturday so we're getting waked like crazy from all the boats going from St. Augustine out for fishing or over to this beach and it's just become really annoying just wobbling around all day and we really need to get some groceries so we're going to go anchor by this bridge over here it's supposed to be a no wake zone I doubt most people are following it but we'll find out at least it should be a little better because there won't be as many people coming from St. Augustine over to here Oh, well, that was a long day of cruising. Just did maybe two miles. And it was going really well. Lots of speed when we were leaving our anchorage. But then as soon as we did the turn, we slowed down to like less than two knots. There's so much current here. 
but we dropped the hook just beside the Villano Beach uh, Bridge and the fishing pier, which is where we're gonna dingy over and go get the groceries and maybe swim. The nature trail boardwalk isn't very long, but there's some nice artwork along it. And you can see many birds. What do you think of the nature boardwalk? It's pretty cool, through the mangroves. I thought it ended here, but it looks like it goes around a little bit further. Pretty neat. It's a really warm day though, so maybe not the best day to be doing this. But the uh, tide's really low, so you see lots of little crabs and stuff crawling out of their holes. <laughs> wow, those bugs, cicadas, they're so loud. It's so darn hot in Florida during the summer months and the breeze from the Atlantic is pretty much all you have to cool you down. Well, that's exciting. We're at the beach. It's been forever since we actually went swimming. So we're at Villano Beach and it should be refreshing. How do you find this? Good. Refreshing. Ah, this is so awesome. Oh, I needed this. Oh, we got a bunch of goodies. Some veggies. Ooh. And some ice cream we gotta eat right now because it's gonna melt. Yum. So here's our bucket of rice. It seals really well, so I really don't understand how this happened. But we have little bugs in our rice. Where did the bugs come from? I have no idea. Like they were in a fully sealed bucket, so I don't understand why there's tons of bugs in there. The only other thing I can think of is that they were in the bag of rice when we bought it and the eggs hatched or something. Well, on further research, what have we figured out? A rice weevil. Sounds like rice devil. So we're gonna try to see how we can get rid of them. If you buy a lot of rice, make sure you transfer it, well, inspect the rice and then transfer it right away into a container that is fully sealed 
because I left all the rice in the bags up until I would use it pretty much. The bags aren't really like fully sealed so bugs could have gotten in or already been there and hatched later. It's insects. Yeah, I mean, it's, so, not, it's yeah. not a huge deal. We'll Extra just, proteins. Ideally, we'll get rid of the rice weevils at, before we eat that batch of rice. Yeah, and so stuff. right now we've got water in the rice and they're all starting to float at the surface. So that's a good way of getting rid of them. I also say that you can put some like sticky traps, pour boiling hot water, or even put the rice in a freezer, which we don't have. But so a freezer for like two to three weeks to kill the eggs doesn't really work for us. Yeah, no, it's not an option. So right now we're just gonna soak them, drown them, and eat the rice. Drown you weevils! <laughs> You're evil weevil! <laughs> that just happened. Oh, uh, there's a bit of a wind squall coming through. All our panels were on their flat position without with clips connecting them to the lifelines. And these two on the windward side just flipped up and we tore the little connection box that connects the wires to the panel. A little bit frustrated because I wanted to do some testing to see if we could get them to work better, thinking maybe it was some of the wiring or the connectors. So that one's definitely screwed up and I'm going to try to solder it and see if I can fix it at one point but for now it's going to be outputting nothing. And they cracked the panels quite a bit or there was, there was already some cracks in them so it's hard to say how much more but we definitely have more cracks than we, we did before. So those panels are definitely not meant to be bashed around. But I mean we were only maybe getting a max 10 amps out of uh, four 100 watt panels. We've got a beautiful sunny day and one of our solar panels broke as we already showed you so I'm gonna see if I can fix it up. Try to get the little connection box where the diodes fit and the wires go into the solar panels soldered back to the solar panel. All our tools, like everything else in the boat, get really rusty just sitting in the boat. It's part of living in a salt water environment. And so what I do normally when they get rusty and hard to open is I spray a little WD-40 kind of in all the seams and I just work it open and close a bunch and wipe off any rust residue that comes out of normally around the where the actual thing rotates there's always a bunch of crap that comes out so as you can see just opening and closing it, there's all this rust coming out but at least now they're opening and closing so I can cut my tie wraps let's go do this we got it we almost lost it overboard since I wasn't paying attention and our little connections went into the salt water which is an ideal we'll give them a little rinse but as you can see this thing is completely detached actually I think it's spun around even so it's supposed to be the other way. So anyway, I'm probably gonna have to resolder both connections. Hopefully we can get it working. So this is a little cap, you use a little screwdriver to pop it off. And they decided that it was a good idea to fill the whole thing with their silicone stuff, which is gonna make it really hard to do any testing. I guess it makes it waterproof, but I don't think that's a great design. Personally, I would have just waterproofed the whole cap and made sure that was sealed well, instead of just jamming a ton of silicone in there. That's just to me a bad design but just I don't know if you can see this but you can tell that the water because this this one was the one that migrated uh, the box actually had shifted over when they glued it down and you can tell that some salt water and stuff has been getting to that connector there um, that's where the little tab comes off and it was connected to this box and it's all corroded so this panel probably wasn't doing the greatest. It makes me wonder what all the other panels are like. It looks like this one here is still connected to the panel even though it twisted and stuff. I'm not sure how long it's going to last for, but we're getting 20 volts like I'd expect to see. So we're going to do a quick little how-to on how to fix a junction box that's come off your solar because that seems to be a reasonably common problem with these flat solar panels because the junction box is standing up. They sometimes get tore off by a line or in our case, the wind grabbed the solar panel and the wires got pulled too tight and tore off this junction box. So I'm gonna show you how to fix I've it. cleaned up the little tab here and also gotten rid of some of the silicone inside here. So the goal is to take a small wire here, solder it to there and then run it up 
the side of this box inside and then solder on the inside of the box so then I can work on it while it's flat. We'll see how this goes. Some tin on the wires. Blowing on me. It stinks. Don't inhale. Okay, so we got some on there. Just keep holding that, move it out of the way. I'm gonna put a little bit on the little tab here. I'm just gonna put the gun on top. Come on, buddy. Line up it in my hole. There we go. Really at this stage, I should be putting some 4200 or something underneath to hold it down. But I kind of want to do a test to make sure that this is actually going to work. Ready to glue this down before we make our top solder connection here. But I just want to make sure that my little solder point here is good. So I'm checking against the wire going through and the other connection. And we have 18 volts. Which I think is okay considering we have a bit of shade on it. It's getting roughly the right volt. We got some polyurethane. We're just going to gob it all over the place. And then use a clamp. The idea behind this is it's hopefully going to hold the little box in place and keep it somewhat watertight. Alright, it's been a few days. This should be all nice and solid now. Just going to remove the clamp. Perfect. Looks good. It's nice and solid. We are all ready for our, our last solder joint. We are just going to put a dab of solder on the end of the wire that I have poked through and a dab of solder on the little tab there that connects to this wire. And then we're just going to solder them together. I'm not sure how well this is going to work. I'm going to have to get that thing super hot. Now I just got to put the wire on the other spot. I got solder on both of them. So it's not the best solder joint in the world, but when I put the pliers on, I, can, I can't move it. So I'm going to trust that it's pretty good. Now I'm just going to put a little bit more sealant or um, polyurethane over top of this to seal it up. Testing it to make sure the connection's good. The two little connectors here. Oop. Make sure they both have voltage and we're getting 21 volts it's working so hot it's super retro traditional looking diner all those lightnings and all the bolts just like slid sideways nasty this they're everywhere one of the many projects we've been meaning to do for a little while now is reseat this front hatch because it's leaking <laughs> 